Okay, now the humble broomstick, rarely used in Jim Z's days, but with this here, you'll be able to sort out the rotator cuff uh, muscle issues. And uh, the reason why I know that, as a former uh, Queensland title Olympic weightlifter, uh, basically we had to do the snatch positions with uh, two Olympic plates either side, which is considerable weight and uh, your shoulders and rotator cuff muscles really had to be sorted out to do those sort of weights. So what we did, we used broomsticks to loosen up the rotator cuff and shoulders accordingly and I'll show you how to do that. And I've been very successful with many clients who've come to me and said they've got rotator cuff issues. Uh, simply by doing the rotation with the broomstick uh, will solve it uh, nine times out of 10 uh, if you do it the way I show you to do it. So here, we take, a, it's got to be a six foot broomstick, short ones aren't any good. Put it in between your thumb and your forefinger, and what I do is actually lean forward like that. And then as you go up, you reach that sticking point, the sticking point there, and rotate around and up. So here, I'm actually moving this in. So I'm moving that in, going up, and it's almost the sticking point now. Moving further, boom, I've got it. Now that's it. Now this is also a great uh, chest and bicep stretch. But as you go back, you can really feel, as you're rotating the shoulders, you can feel every single muscle that's involved in the rotator cuff group really stretching out. So I'm getting it there and I move in a little bit further, just fractions of an inch here, right through. Again, fractions of an inch again here and hold it, that's it, the sticking point. And when I get to the sticking point, I actually push outwards. So outwards, creating an isometric tension on all the associated muscle groups, and then roll it through, roll it through. And the object exercise is keep going until you get those sticking points, like that one there. Push and hold it, hold it. Force the muscle to relax. Now you may do that 10, six to eight times, 10 times, hold it, hold it and just do that after every workout. After every workout that's involved in upper body, uh, especially your shoulders, make certain you do that particular exercise. It's a simple broomstick, not costly, and that's the one. Remember the Olympic weightlifter. He starts here, drops down up like that, show the rotator cuff muscles have got to be really strong, shoulders and everything associated in the, in the shoulder girdle. Now, I find this is really good for the front deltoids and the triceps. Put the broomstick down the line of your spine. Bring your elbow up near beside your head. Now, my left shoulder, as I creep this down, I'm hanging on, and this broomstick's right down the line of my spine, so I'm in perfect symmetry, and then I go to pull it apart. Now, when I do that, my triceps muscle and my left deltoid is copying the on an almighty stretch all the way down the deltoid muscle right down the arm and then i creep the arms in creep them in in and then bang hit it again push try and pull it apart keep yourself symmetrical if you're doing this in front of the mirror you watch where the um, broom handle is and it looks like it's traveling right down your spine like a rod that's exactly where it should be keeping the body in perfect symmetry and balance and therefore posturally aligned correctly and can pick up any imbalances along the way. So you do it that way two to three times, move in, move in, swap it over, pull it in again, bang, keep that elbow in tight and pull that apart, right, and this right shoulder will cop one hell of a stretch. Move it in again and pull and hold, 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 hold it, do that two to three times and you'll find any tightness with your shoulders is really relieved. After that, just put your shoulders into um, this direction and that direction so that you can see you've got the flexion going backwards here like that one, two, get that range of motion into the full flexion 15 degrees out, this one here 15 or 10 degrees up, two, Three, roll the shoulders around here. One, two, three, and backwards. One, two, three, etc. And then karate chop. See, karate chop. One, stretches the top out. One, two, 
One, two. On the side, one, two. One, two. Elbow, strike. Elbow, strike. And then switch them over. Elbow, strike. Elbow, strike. So the whole shoulder is starting to get stretched. So you loosen them up. Really loosen them up. Now, we've solved quite a few problems. One in particular with one of my clients who had Sherman's disease from when he was a kid. His whole back was tightened up. It was quite lordotic. He only had about 70% 70, 70 use of his back. David Parker was the client's name. Now, what we did, this particular stretching gave him tremendous relief, apart from the broomstick stretching. Uh, there was one that I just thought of to actually pull the middle of the back outwards. And it's like what I call, it's the big hug, hug yourself. So what you do, you go around, lock in, See here, it looks like my hands are creeping in, like that. I pull the elbows down and try and split my shirt. So tsah, pull it down. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm actually pulling the rhomboid muscles, everything across the shoulders being pulled out like that. Swap it over, creep in, and pull, pull down. Two, three, four, five. Now do that three times and swap over. Creep in and try and, the, the, thought, of, the thought pattern I want is that you're trying to split your shirt down the center of the back. Okay, so the next one is just imagine you've got a pec deck and you're using your elbow to push the pec deck in, except I'm gonna put my hand here and stop it. And then I'm going to try and push back this way, but by me doing this and going really hard, I'm actually um, stretching the back of the shoulders and the rear deltoids in an isometric contraction. So here I am here, push, one, two, three, four, five, six. An opposite way here, push, two, three, four, five, six. So if I let this hand go, this hand would go back like that, but this is what I'm doing right across the shoulders, very, uh, it's held isometrically, and it relieves pressure across the shoulder blades. And this was what solved the problem with David Parker. As I said, he had that um, Sherman's disease where very lordotic posture, and I slowly, we manipulated it back. It took us about six weeks, but we focused on doing those the rotators, these ones, these ones, and it just, it got his back back to, as he said, and I've got that, I think I have that on my website as well, he said about 90% use. So it went from 70 to 90 by doing these simple stretches, but in an isometric contractions. So there's some good ones for you to use uh, if you've got these sort of problems. Right, here we are now. Uh, this DVD is going to finish just on the basic stretching, the martial arts stretching. Uh, we will do on another DVD because that's a whole world of stretching um, which we'll treat separately. Now, this uh, is called the Master Yoga Stretch and uh, as I've had 34 years experience, what I've done is actually uh, come across people who have really uh, got nuggets of information and one of them that I came across was a yoga teacher and she showed me this particular exercise and as a martial arts instructor I dubbed this the master stretch and it really is good we'll show you how to do it now um, and uh, you know the only thing is you have to have a training partner to do this particular stretch so what you do you just sit between each other uh, one feet is inside the others depending on how tall or long or short the person is and preferably uh, you do this after you've done the piriformis and psoas stretching, some of those stretches we showed you on the DVD, and this is one that you sort of finish off with, but it covers a lot of things. It covers the hip rotators, it covers the erector spine, act, it covers the stretching groin muscles, uh, it even covers the lat muscles. As you'll see, it covers a lot of things in one big stretching procedure. So what we do, we interlock the hands and what we do I pull 
Andrea forward like that, and I'm leaning back. Right, she's looking forward, not down. And she's focusing on her heels. You notice that the toes are pulled back. And of course, girls have got pink uh, socks and, and boys have got blue ones usually. Okay, so we move back and I go back and look forward and I'm pushing down with my heels and just hold it there, that's it. So hold that tension on, change, and you just adapt to the person's flexibility. Just and just tap them on the fingers or give them some sort of indication or tap them on the wrist. Is that far enough? So Andrew's pretty flexible for a girl who had a crook back for uh, 17 years. Not too bad now. Okay, and change and stretch. That's it. Now at the same time, I'm pushing my heels down and creating like a stability tension on my hamstrings. Change. And you just keep going backwards and forwards until you feel everything releasing. Now, as I lean back, sometimes my L1 to 5 will just click in automatically from doing this. So, change. How's your back going, Andrew? Right? And again, change, good, stretch, Andrew's getting very, back's getting very loose so I can feel it, and change, all right, should be looking forward, that's it, now, from there we go around in a big elliptical circle, so just imagine your hands, a giant rubber band, and it's wrapped around your shoulders and you're going in this big, slow circle. Now this is every ligament that is attached to your hips and the lower back and the hip girdle is being rotated around in a big elastic circle. It's like having a big rubber band around your back and your hands are just part and your arms are part of that rubber band. So you're just going maybe three or four, five, six times. You go around just so you can feel things loosening up. And at the same time, you're pushing in with your heels to keep things fairly stable. Now we go the other way. There, big stretch there. I'm going down beside the thigh muscles, down. Nice and slow and steady. Right back. Right back. Here, there, maybe six times each side. That's good. And backwards and forwards again. Now, this time, everything should be loosened right up because the hips and the attachments to the hip rotations, the hip rotators, are all being loosened up now. That's good. Two, stretching. That's it, now my back just went click, 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 click. So the pressure's gone with the master yoga stretch, or master yoga stretch, whatever you should call it. <laughs> you like that? Okay, so stretch here. I'm going right back now. And there. Notice we've loosened up. Thanks, Andrew. So that's really good. So that's the master yoga stretch or Yoda stretch, um, and you can see a hard copy of that on healyshealthandfitness.com. Thank you okay. very much. The very last one we've got, we're using a, a foam roller. Now, I specifically made these uh, for Healy's Health and Fitness. They're, they're actually uh, pool noodles, quite a thick pool noodle, pool noodle. and I've put a, uh, uh, a broomstick through the middle to give them a bit of uh, stability. Uh, I found the bigger ones are too harsh. These smaller ones are quite uh, satisfactory. So, if, especially if you've done a leg workout, these are great for squeezing out any of the lactic acid uh, um, that's accumulated in the muscles back into the bloodstream. Um, and I also find that they're good for stretching out the muscles. So it sort of reminds me of your grandmother or your mother rolling out um, um, you know, um, the cooking side of things, bread or whatever. And this is exactly what this does uh, to your uh, muscles. And of course, you can use it for your spine as well. And the first one we'll do is I'll show you how to use it for your spine. Okay, I'm just 
taking that here, and I'll just go side on so you can see that a little bit clearer. And I've got that in the nape of my neck. The only thing you have to watch is it'll gather up your t-shirt. So you grab your t-shirt like that, and you basically do a very slow commando backward walk, and slowly iron out across the spine here. But when you get down to your L1 to 4 near the kidney area, it's a little bit sensitive down there. So if you're not used to it, be careful. Look at that. Now, backwards. And as I did that, my the thoracic part of my spine clicked a couple of times, so it's actually bringing it all into alignment. And this sort of exercise can support your chiropractic care as well. So you can back up your chiropractor with doing these sort of things. And it is especially effective after exercise when your body is nice and warm, and so therefore the muscles are loose. Okay, so we just go backwards, all the way down. Down, all down here, just as many times as you like till you feel everything clicking in, everything feels relaxed, and the muscles accordingly are um, loosened up. Now, the best, other best part that I like using these for is the legs. Glutes muscles, right on the backside, slowly roll forward, downwards, cross the hamstrings, backwards and forwards like so, as many times as you like, especially after you've done a heavy leg workout, you know, the muscles really need to be not only stretched, but they need uh, all that um, lactic acid or the byproduct of metabolism to be squeezed back into the bloodstream. This is an excellent way of doing it, and your body will thank you for it. So on the glute muscles, backwards and forwards. Now, turn over on the side, and you do the TFL and the vastus lateralis on the side there. And just what I like to do is just get down on the side of this and, and use this leg and push very carefully down, backwards and forwards, follow the line of the body right up to the hip area, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards like that. Right all the way, even if you want to go right down to the knee, cross there, all the muscle attachments, Iron it out, roll it out, and, it'll, and your, your body will thank you for it. So, we do that both sides, over on here, the TFL. Right, the TFL sits here like this, it's a small muscle, and it has the fascia tissue that goes right in here to hold the side of the knee, and that's part of the leg together, basically. And it'll rotate the leg, have a look at the anatomy of skeletal muscles by stone and stone, I'll give you the full Definition of the TFL. Roll it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards here, right down to the vastus lateralis, the quad muscle. Now, over on the top, do both the top of the quads, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, many times as you like till you feel everything's been ironed out really well, right over the knees if you have to. And finally, you can do the calf muscles, which are easy to do. Just get a little bit proficient with the rolling techniques, like so, and etc. So with a simple, thick pearl noodle with a broomstick in the middle, you can make your muscles relax and stretch out all those um, impediments in the muscle. Also, you can put your spine back into place and assist the chiropractor's treatments by backing it up with these sort of stretching exercises at the same time. All right, that's the completion of this uh, Healy's Ultimate Stretching Tape. And I'd just like to thank uh, Marty for uh, the uh, program development and production. Also, I'd like to thank Andrea for helping me uh, in those various stretches. Um, now, if you combine that in with uh, Healy's Back to Basic programming and you use this as a stretching tape, uh, it'll reinforce a lot of the stretching that you should be doing after your weights workout or after any particular workout, be it running or whatever. The next tape that we do, uh, we'll have one on uh, martial arts stretching, which will be a little bit more detailed than this one, and it'll be more specific towards kicking flexibility, etc., etc. So thanks very much for uh, watching this tape, and we look forward to the next one coming very shortly.